Yes. Welcome, welcome, or welcome back. Uh, this is our uh, the beginning of our final session this afternoon. The um, one of our presenters is not here, and I haven't been able to determine whether she is on her way or has somehow forgotten us. But I think we're going to we're going to proceed <laughs> and, and with the people that we have here, which is a wonderful uh, forum. So our, our first presenter on our I'm thinking of this as our ethnomusicology afternoon. Um, is Professor Alexis Ruchis? Ruchis? Yes, but no professor. <laughs> no, not professor yet. He's still working on that. From Humboldt University. You're going to be professing. He's professing, so yes. From Berlin, who's come all the way from Berlin for us. And uh, so we're very happy to have him start off this session. Uh, healing sounds of the Temiar, seeing a path through the chaotic world. Thank you very much. And thank you very much to, uh, for inviting me. And um, I think I have never, never sung so much at a so <laughs> much at a conference. It's unbelievable. Um, I very, I'm very glad I'm here. Okay. A photograph made by Marina Roseman shows a scene in a Tamiya house. An old man just wearing shorts is bending his body towards a young woman. The woman is wearing a wrap of an overskirt and is sitting calmly. The man is shaping a blowpipe with his fists and he is focusing towards the head of the woman. The tension of the arm muscles and the concentrated mind are focusing all energy towards the woman. Left. Mike. Sorry? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> The tension of the arm muscles and the concentrated mind are focusing all energy towards the woman. She seems to have confidence in all of what the man is doing and she looks relaxed. Both persons seem to be interconnected with each other. They both seem to be walking towards a common aim which demands the highest concentration. In my talk, I want to explain why the old man is so concentrated and why he is pretending to be blowing something into the woman's head and not at least what this scene has to do with music and healing and what one could induce from this example as a common statement about the connection between music and healing. To understand this scene, one must imagine that one is perceiving the world from a Tinia perspective and to recognize the different powers of the cosmos which influence the Tamiya world. The Malaysian peninsula Malacca is divided into mountain regions, lowland plains, rivers and lakes. The peninsula is to a great extent covered by rainforests. Amidst this rainforest can be found the settlements of the Tinga people who live in a symbiosis with the surrounding jungle. They hunt, go fishing, plant hill rice, maize or gather fruits. The Tinias belong to the Sinai ethnic division of the Oran Asli. The 12,000 Timiars live in small settlements with 25 to 150 inhabitants. These settlements are nearby jungle rivers. In the, the highlands, the Timiars settle at about the, the high of 100, 1,200 meters, and in the lowland plains, about 300 meters. Timiar settlements integrate into the surrounding jungle. The houses are permeable to the jungle. They stand on high poles. The walls and the floor are made of bamboo rocks, which have a space of two centimeters between them. The gaps function as vents for the smoke of the fireplace and to let food waste fall to the earth. But they have also the function to satisfy the need of the Timias for looking into the jungle. The settlements and houses protect against the threats of the jungle, but they also are a permeable connection to the jungle. 
This is characteristic of the connection between the Timias and their conception of the world. The Timias live in a symbiosis with all beings. The high volume that the Timias attach to living together can be seen in the big common room of the Timia houses. The Timias have very, very flat hierarchies. They are equal to each other, but a chief of the village is in a marginally higher position. He tries to legitimize his decisions through talking and convincing the other inhabitants. In a similar manner, the economy is not defined by a direct exchange of goods. Food and other products are given without any service in return. But the Jimmy are considered that the one to whom something was given to you would act in a similar manner in the future. The Timias comprehend that every being in nature has a configuration of souls. The upper soul called Ebai, which is situated in the head of man, in the leaves of plants, and in the upper body of animals, or on the summits of mountains. A lower soul called Hoop, which is situated in the region of man's heart, in the roots of plants, in the lower body of animals, or in the lower mass of rocks or caves of mountains. An order soul called Noi, and a shadow soul called Bog. Each configuration of these souls, the head soul Ewai, the heart soul Hoop, the order soul Noi, and the shadow soul Bog, is considered from a Western perspective a of what an individual is. The individual exists for, through the complex interconnections of these souls with other beings. That means that the individual is defined by a strong social connection with other individuals and with souls of other items of the environment. Rebai is the head soul and is, detachable, is the, a detachable component of the self. If it contains the ritual energy of a person and is often related to the voice and to the expression of feelings. Who is the heart soul, which contains experience, thinking, memory and feelings. The order, so Noi, is also, as Eva is, the detachable component of the self. It defines and animates the personal space. Noi is a part of the sweat and its aura extends from the back of a person. If a Timia passes behind a sitting person, she or he would shout, Noi, Noi, Noi. The Timias believe that Noi could bring illness to a person passing by, and by shouting out loud its name, Noi would be ashamed that its name is shouted in public and that everyone is conscious about it. The shadow soul woke is identified as an identical as identical to the person's physical shadow. Therefore, one could say it represents the body as a whole and must be considered when particular diseases occur. During an illness, only the walk of relatives are allowed to touch the body of the patient as shadows. The individual is connected for these souls with every other being. Accordingly, this proportion can occur, which a healing song can balance. According to the Tamias, illness can occur by not following certain rules, especially by not following rules of distributing and preparing food. The disease Genha, for example, befalls D1, who ate a particular kind of meat that was incorrectly distributed in the village or badly prepared according to definite rules. The symptoms of Genha are shivering feats or whitening and loss of hair. It is also said that in some cases this illness could be fatal. The Timias protect themselves against Genha by living in a complex system of distributing and preparing the different kinds of meat. The disease Tenru occurs if a Timia ate a kind of meat which was not meant for her or him, considering the gender of the person, the age, or whether she or he is a mother or father. 
The symptoms are shivering fits, lack of appetite, irritability, difficulties to breathe, nausea, and that the patient is imitating animals. The illness mystic occurs when someone laughs at another person or when someone makes fun of the cry of animals by imitating them. Symptoms of mystic could be diarrhea, dangerous thunderstorms, or attacks of tigers. I think especially this illness shows how interwoven an individual is with her or his environment, according to the team. Another source of illness are malicious souls. The illness bard is considered to be a creature which lives by the rivers. It is said that it is about 15 centimeters long and looks like a fin worm. Bard befalls D1 who travels by the rivers. It sucks out energy of the heart and its symptoms are swellings of the abdomen or and diarrhea. To protect people who were traveling by the rivers from Bart, they are treated with smoke from the fireplace. If Bart accuses, a healer tries to suck it out of the patient's body. Another creature who lives in the jungle is Semya. It has no shape and sticks onto the back of travelers. Symptoms of Semya are fever and difficulties to breathe. Like Bart, Semya is treated prophylactically with smoke from the fireplace. Another disease is Reiwai, not to be confused with Reiwa, the head soul. Reiwai emerges when the head soul of a non-human is attracted to a person. For instance, the Reiwai of the rice could cause Reiwai. Therefore, children are not allowed to play by the rice field. They could tempt the Reiwai of the rice. To balance these different souls of the Timia cosmos, spirit guides in Timia called Hala, the healing song called Non, and a spiritual liquid called Kayak are of great significance. A dreamer who receives songs from spirit guides can also be called Hala, just as the spirit guide is denoted by the Timias, because it is a short form of the phrase a person with Hala. To not confuse us, I will only call the healing person Hala and use the term spirit guide when I refer to the Hala which appears in a dream and brings a healing song. Non is the healing song, but the term non means also a footpath through the jungle. The non is memorized in the hoop, the heart song. Kayak is a cool spiritual liquid, a form which the Levi of a spirit guide takes when it flows through a Hala during a ceremony. Kayak is often compared with the colorless set of plants, clear mountain water or morning dew. Spirit guides manifest themselves through kayak or through anon. To cure the disproportion the illness agent has caused, a healing ceremony is held. One of the most effective is the Penho ceremony. During a dream, the Reva is temporarily detached from the body of the dreamer to meet Rewai souls of other beings like tigers, flowers, mountains, or other humans. This is the moment when a non could be given to a dreamer. If this happens, the Rewai from, from another soul has the function of a spirit guide. For example, the Hala Buddha Panda from the settlement Kong describes how he received his non from the spirit guide of the Kerala flower's head so Quote, The Kerala flower, I scattered the seed, I planted it. It sprouted, I tended it, patting and shaping the earth around the shoot. It arose, I tended it. It grew and bore flowers, it gave off fragrance. I went home, I fell asleep straight off. Suddenly, taking form, there emerged a male. He said, I, I came to you. It is you that I want. I come home here to you. After finishing speaking, immediately he began to sing. End quote. Buddha Pandak's description of the learning process is at the same time the norm itself 
which the spirit guide of the caravan flower has given to him. While he was dreaming, a male figure emerged from the caravan flower. He began to sing. Uda Pandak repeated the song to learn it and to be able to use it in a healing ceremony. In a similar way, other Timias explain how they have gotten their non. During a dream, a human male or female figure emerged who is the rabbi of an item of the Tamiya environment. The rabbi of the Kevalad flower morphs into human shape because it is necessary that the souls are similar in order to communicate with each other. This small figure sings a particularly particular song line by line so that the dreamer can repeat and learn it. This process could be continuing throughout several dreams and a particular time period. For instance, the Hala Adinkera explained that the spirit guide of the mountain Henwe visited him about one time a week in a dream to give his non to him. The receiving of a non cannot be forced out of a being's rebai. The rebai, as a spirit guide, chooses the dreamer by itself. However, there are actions which could support the receiving of a nun. For example, Uda Pandak tells in his nun that he has planted a Kerala flower and took care about it. This is often taught about fruit trees and flowers which the dreamer has planted by himself and of which shoots he has taken care of. The nun of Uda Pandak is a good example how deep healing ceremonies, the cosmos and all beings are connected in the notions of the Thenias. Pandak describes the rising of the shoot as a sunrise. In the Temia language, this term is also used to introduce a healing ceremony. With it, the norm starts. Another remarkable part is that the carol flower spreads its fragrance. This is connected to the order soul, Noi, which connects plants and human beings, and therefore, in ceremonies, leaves of plants and flowers are used. There are different ceremonies and musical genres in the Timia culture. One of the most effective is the healing ceremony Penho. When a Penho is held, all people of a settlement assemble in the house with the biggest room in the house of the Hala or the patient who is not able to be brought to another house. The healer. The healer. The Hala is the central figure of, in the ceremony. He sings his non and in, is um, accompanied by a group of women who also sing and play a pair of bamboo stampers. Sometimes there are used more instruments like one or two drums or a small gong. Flowers and leaves are essential for the ceremony since they attract the spirit guide and, and provide an environment that is similar to the jungle so that the spirit guide could make itself at home. Therefore, a big hanging leaf uh, wreath called te, te, tam, te, nimo, te namu, accommodates the spirit guide during a ceremony. Kayak is brought to the ceremony with the leaves and flowers because they contain kayak of the jungle and from mountain water. From handheld leaf wreaths, singers and dancers spread kayak to all community members. The order so noi is also essential for the healing ceremony. Through the noi of dried fruits, plant roots and beeswax, the spirit guide is attracted. As said earlier, the noi supports the relation between human beings and items of their environment. The learning process of the dream becomes visible in the healing ceremony. As the spirit guide first sang the non and the dreamer repeated it, the Hala in the ceremony first sing the, the non and the female choir repeats it. That means that in the dream the Hala followed the non of the spirit guide and that in the healing ceremony the group of, group of women who repeated the non of the Hala follow the spirit guide too. An example shows how a non is used in a healing ceremony. A young man is suffering from headache, fever, and chest congestion. The symptoms were caused 
because the young man ate from food that was not meant for him and now is suffering from tenru. The Hala Alinkira is singing his song, which he has received from the Panesha flower. At the beginning, in the, the Hala serves as a medium for the voice of the spirit guide. Kara is standing and waving his leaf with. After about four minutes, the young patient is, sits in front of the Hala. Adinkera begins to sing. He's blowing the cool spiritual liquid kayak into the, into the head, the chest, and the back of the suffering. The kayak is coming from the spirit guide through the moon. With the voice of the spirit guide, which is higher than Adinkera's normal voice, he asks the relatives of the young man and how the illness has emerged. Um, I will play now a, a 70 minute um, audio file which you hear the healing ceremony and it is it's very slow and it's kind of meditating but I think you, you could hear um, the non as the Hala sings it, the bamboo stampers um, and the choir and also that um, the Hala is, is sucking and blowing something. Sucking and blowing, not something, kike. <laughs> <laughs>
The image that I showed at the beginning is now explainable. The old man is a hala, a sitting woman, a patient. The hala is concentrated in this manner because he deals with energy and forces of the cosmos to heal the woman. He does not imitate that he blows something into the woman's head. To heal her, he really blows kayak in, into her head, so ay, and into her heart, so who. The woman is relaxed because she knows and feels that she is a part of the cosmos and that she only would be cured when her soul are, when her souls are balanced and she would be connected in a healthy manner as a part of the cosmos again. In the understanding of the Timia, music is an integral part of the world. Through music, souls have the opportunity to meet and to be connected. Music is the key to the living cosmos. The norm could create a timeout in the fluent interconnection of the souls. A timeout to rearrange things, it creates the situation of asking and forcing the cosmos to heal the disordered soul of a deceased person by synchronizing all community members in the melody and rhythm of the spirit guide. In an extrinsic interpretation, music is a fundamental concept of the Timia society to avoid illness. Music binds the community together and makes the Timias aware of their environment and its impact. One spirit or soul can be a spirit guide or an illness agent. The non lets the Timia influence their environment. In that way of thinking, the musical healing ceremony of the Timias is not only a music therapy as an alternative treatment considering particular symptoms. According to the Timias, music is a part of the world and its beings and therefore much more influential than any special medical drug in a holistic sense could be. Thank you very much. back and forth, but jot down notes. Uh, I see our next presenter has in fact arrived. So let's everybody kind of stretch a bit, and uh, when Sarah's prepared, we will proceed. Thank you. Thank you. 